Thanks. Good. What's up, everybody? Good. Third day of Net Impact, final day. That deserves a little stretching, I think. I just flew in from Argentina, so I could literally, I took a nap and I came over here. So I want to just start, I need a stretch. So everybody, stand up. Okay? Let's get this started right. I'm going to test you. Now, I want you guys to reach your hands up in the air as high as they can go. Seriously? Who's on their tippy toes? Second time. I said as high as you can go. Nope, not good enough. Who's standing on their chair? Okay, sit back down. Let's talk about the whole prize. Let's talk about impact. Let's talk about how you need to challenge yourself more. What we do at the Holt Prize is we ask young, brilliant minds that third time further, further. Can you do more? Can you lift your hand higher? Okay? I started the Holt Prize as a student, sitting down in that chair. This is my eighth net impact. Since launching this platform, which gives young people a chance, a risk-free opportunity to literally dream big and solve challenges through the creation of for-profit, for-good companies, we've been able to set a trajectory which is being felt across academia, private sector, and public sector. I'm going to share with you my story. And this is all the credentials. This is the thought leadership stuff, if you guys have seen the, the TED Talk parody. So funny. Watch it if you can. So I have to show you that I'm accomplished. I'm on the board of the UNDP. I'm an entrepreneur, advisor at the World Economic Forum, et cetera, et cetera. But most importantly, I was you just eight years ago. And this is what I've been able to do, and here's my story. I started on Wall Street. Why? I was the son of Palestinian immigrants. And the only thing I could think of, I knew the hustle. How many of you are the children of immigrants in the room? That's right. Give it up. As the children of immigrants, we have so much pressure. All we want to do is make mom and dad proud. They gave up everything, their own lives, so that the lives of their children could be successful. For me, that was simple. Go make as much money as you could. Not because making money was something that I thought was so important. I just wanted to make mom happy, and I wanted to be validated, right? So I got on this pursuit of income, and at the age of 25, I was one of the top finance bankers in the real estate market in New York and in the Middle East. I was bridging capital, meeting with governments in Dubai, Amman, Abu Dhabi, and bringing that money into the U.S. And then the market fell out right beneath us, and I went back to business school. And I developed this pursuit map because this is what I was feeling back then in 2009. I had made money and got my hopes and dreams wiped out from beneath me, and I thought I was making mom and dad proud. But what I realized quickly is even after you make money, there's still more. Some pursue pedigree. They continue to go to school, accolades, validation. Some pursue fame. But after you achieve each and every one of these things, income, fame, pedigree, there's still more. The more is impact. Everybody uses this word, but what does it mean? How is it achieved? For us at the Holt Prize, it's being able to change the trajectory of lives, period, whether it be your own or the beneficiaries you serve. So literally three years after launching, we became recognized one of the top five initiatives changing the world by Bill Clinton. I wasn't so sure why at the time. Right? I knew we were doing something amazing by mobilizing thousands and thousands of young people around the world to literally throw their hat in the ring. See, we create entrepreneurs at the whole prize. The people who start don't start with an idea. They start with a team, and then they work their way to an idea. But what I realized was we cracked the code. Over the last nearly decade, we've been featured in over 50 countries around the world's media. Right? The U.S. is a big market for us, but so is the rest of the world. The reality is, is the secret sauce in what we do is we've activated a network, a community, with the likes of Liz. Thank you so much, Liz. I almost got thrown out of the first Net Impact conference I attended because I had just dreamed up the idea for the whole prize. 
and I was literally passing out postcards to this very community here. And I was saying, hey, participate, participate. Since launching, we've had more than 100,000 people participate. We've impacted the lives of millions. And now we're launching on-campus programs. How many of our campus directors are in the room? Show of hands. Handful. Thank you, guys. And the next phase is we've launched in-country events where we have local prizes. We have local incubators. So our global prize is a million dollars. And that's what our winner gets every year. And we know the model works because we've built a criteria around the inputs, not the outputs. OK? And the next part of my presentation is going to focus on how I launched the Holt Prize and what you can do to get your game-changing enterprise off the ground. You've spent three days talking about how, the right market, the right opportunity, dissecting the business. But how are you going to take that and build a framework? I'm giving you a framework. At the Holt Prize, we believe that the companies of the future will be impact-centered, profit-minded, and market-driven. And if you create this kind of initiative or a company, you don't need to worry about the 101 output metrics, because your company is designed correctly. OK? I know it works. On last year's Forbes 30 under 30 list for social entrepreneurs, Holt Prize entrepreneurs represented 14 between the global and the European list. OK? Thank you. Not only that, our entrepreneurs are going off to win things like Mass Challenge, which was two nights ago in Boston. We had two winners of the five. OK? How? What's the secret sauce? Well, this is the roadmap. This was my own roadmap, right? Pick the right problem. I, again, for Monsanto, it's broccoli. Great, right? For us, we're talking to you about picking problems not only that impact society, but you can tell the right story against something that's personal to you. See, this kitty cat here has picked the wrong problem. While well, fun for those Rubik's Cube hackers, Right? You can spend an eternity doing the wrong thing, solving the wrong problem. How do you know you've got the right problem identified? Think about it. It bugs you. It's called an insight. An insight is something, an idea, a feeling that you can't get rid of. My insight in launching the Holt Prize was how could the son of immigrants that came from nothing, came from dirt, not have known about the opportunity to blend for good and for profit? I had never before heard in 2009 of the impact enterprise. I thought charity was charity and business was business. And that bugged me. And I, th I, I thought out to create a platform where I could inspire people like you. And hundreds of thousands more have come along for the journey. The second thing, and the reason picking the right problem is so important, because being successful and getting a great company or initiative off the ground is being able to tell your story. And I love telling my story. I literally, I do it about 100 times a year. I spend most of my life, the last eight or nine years, on a plane, meeting with people, executives. I was in Buenos Aires, meeting with the best deans at business schools around the world, talking to them about the future of education, telling my story of where my parents come from. This is a picture of a refugee camp, right? As a Palestinian, we're one of the biggest refugee camps, refugee communities in the world. And I was telling them my story, and one of the deans says to me afterwards, he says, Ahmad, so impressive, but let me ask you, where did you get your training? And I thought to myself, what did he mean where did I get my training? And I think he wanted to know where I went to business school, et cetera. I said, you know, Google. That's where our generation learns, OK? So be able to pick a problem and tell your story. Now, probably the most critical thing we did at the Hull Prize, we filled gaps with partners. I needed a venue for a finals. So we collaborated with the Clinton Global Initiative. And the last five years, we've been the number one rated event and program inside of the Clinton Global Initiative. We needed a community of students, so we partnered with Net Impact. Thank you so much, Liz. You'll see Liz there in the middle of the, of the screen. She's a judge at one of our Holt Prize regionals. We built this incubator, and we needed to house our entrepreneurs. So instead of coming up from scratch and building an, a housing program, we partnered with a company called Crash. Crash is now bankrupt, but we took all that IP and learning 
and we now run our own. So again, they shortcut it. Partners, advocates, and influencers. Most important influencers, guys, you know, everybody knows the whole prize, Bill Clinton, our great champion. But it's not like he came to us. We sold Bill Clinton. We sold the idea. And if you pick a great problem and tell a great story, I assure you, you can sell anyone. And getting those influencers on board will help you. You have surrogates, okay? And of course, the legendary writing your own rules, right? Steve Jobs, there's no explanation needed here. What Steve Jobs taught us how to use touchscreen mobile phones. But before you write your own rules, you need to understand the rules of the game of which you're currently in. And that's where a lot of the millennial generation makes a mistake. We get ahead of ourselves. We start writing rules before we become masters of the existing game. And at the whole prize, we started slow. We started as this kind of pitch competition. Then we got a little bit smarter. We learned the rules of the game. And then we started doing crazy stuff, like this year's challenge, which is all about refugees. And because we had seven years experience of writing these breakthrough challenges, these documents that guided young people to create the enterprise of the future, my staff and I, we said, why are there only 60 million refugees? That number doesn't seem right. Why do we only start counting when terror is at your door, when you actually have to get up and move? What about before? So we redefined the refugee sector. And everybody went crazy. They said, who are these guys? Who do they think they are? They're writing their own rules. One billion refugees out there? Absolutely. If you currently live in a slum, I would say you have similar conditions as a refugee. And we've allotted those into our challenge for this year specifically. And then something crazy happens. People start catching on. Harvard Business School is now publishing on the Holt Prize effect, on some of the new rules we're writing. I'm also on the board at the UNDP and the UNDP were very close to now adopting this new resolution on refugees throughout 152 field offices across the UN. So again, when you get it right, people start to listen. Now, why is this so important? Where do we go from here? And I'll tell you, corporations are starting to realize that impact and having positive net effect on the communities you serve yields to higher share price of their companies. This is the best outcome we can hope for. Why is this happening? Well, you guys, right? I like to include, I'm on the tail end of the millennial. Like 82, who counts 82 millennials? I do, right? Well, I count all the way down to 80, all right? But the millennial generation is reshifting the way corporations think about business. Why? Eight out of 10 of us seek out brands having positive impact. You understand what that's doing to the corporation. You're telling the corporation, if you don't have impact on the society that you're serving, you will be extinct in a decade. That's big, right? Now, what the corporations really love is this last item in pink. 60% of millennials will pay a premium, all else being equal. Again, it is now, it is now profitable, profitable to think of society. And I'm not a capitalist by any means of the word. While I used to be an eye banker and all that, but I don't believe that making money and having impact are mutually exclusive. And I'm so excited because when we started this talk about social goodwill, the value, the market cap of a company can be credited to how much good work it's doing and doing it sustainably, right? We can now sniff out companies which are just allocating top line revenue allocating that to the poor. That's not good enough. You need to design for impact. Buy one, give one is the model of the past. It served its purpose for where we are today, but now we need to think further. And these are five companies which are getting it right. Companies by where have weaved in impact. And as you think of your next big enterprise, your next big idea, you have to design for impact. You have to design your product or service so that by a mere function of you existing, you have a net impact on society. You don't just cut a check. And I'll give you an example if you look at Nestle. The reason I have Nestle, Patagonia, Unilever, and Ikea up here is because Nestle, guys, the world's water crisis is worse today if Nestle didn't exist. 
by them simply existing, the social issue is better. That's how you have to think. You can't think of a policy change in your company and all of a sudden you're not able to give a pair of shoes away. And you're not able to have impact because somebody on your board says, eh, let's focus on profit. Because if you follow the methodology of impact-centered, profit-minded, market-driven, all you need to focus on is one measurement, revenue, period. Because your companies are designed for impact. Now, you guys, why do we give $1 million to one winning startup? Why is it so important for me to only activate just one single person in this room? This is a map of the construction of Silicon Valley. Most people think Silicon Valley was built over 500 years, etc. It wasn't. 1958, one person heads off to Silicon Valley and one company is created, Fairchild Semiconductor. Eight first hires. From that one company, 92 companies have been spun off which can be directly traced thanks to the great work of Endeavor and the World Bank. We have this data. $2.1 trillion of market cap were created by one person, one idea, one city. That's all it takes. We launched a company in 2013 called Aspire Food Group. Aspire Food Group thought it was a good idea to sell insects as a protein source. Since 2013, Aspire has become valued at over $100 million and has spawned an entire sector around insect for human food consumption. And they're now working on an animal feed product that the UN has called a game changer that's likely to cha end the world. So it starts here with you guys today. I only ask who in here will rise to the occasion. Participating in the Holt Prize is one avenue for you, but there's many others, thanks to the good works of Net Impact, my fellow panelists, speakers, and other players in this space. Here's a few tips. I won't go through them for the sake of time, but I'll leave them up there for you guys to take pictures. Thank you very much, and I fare you well. <laughs>